Success Insight shares the stories of the people with passion and drive who make things happen in the world. Here's your host, Howard Fox. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series on the Success Insight Podcast. The Outdoor Adventure Series celebrates individuals and families, businesses, and organizations that seek out and promote the exploration of the great outdoors. Our guests today are Joyce Yu and Shane Borza. Joyce is a voice actor and career coach, and her husband Shane is a filmmaker and life coach. Joyce and Shane, welcome to the Outdoor Adventure Series on the Success Inside Podcast. Thank you. Hi, Howard. Yeah, it's great to be here. Shane, it's so nice to meet you finally. And for our listeners, you may recall Joyce was on our podcast, God, way back in October 2020, episode 91. We had a series running then called Side Hustle Saturday. And as we just alluded to, Joyce is a voice actor in addition to being a career coach. And Joyce and I also work together. We are career coaches or I guess, yeah, career coaches here and consultants here in Las Vegas. And I know she has mentioned her husband, uh, Shane, many times and really for a unique reason. And so what what I would love, because I, I think this is really cool. You guys share what you did. How long have you been in Las Vegas? Let's start there. So we moved here at the beginning of 2020. Great mm-hmm. timing right before the pandemic. Of course. So, <laughs> it was a little bit strange trying to get to know a new city without being able to do much. And so we did end up going outdoors a lot. So doing a lot of stuff in Red Rocks, hiking, climbing. And that was kind of how we got to be active and do things out here. Fantastic. Now, Shane, uh, share a little bit about your background. I know, uh, obviously, I mentioned that you're a filmmaker, you're also a life coach in your own right. Share a little bit about your kind of background overall. And obviously, you're married to Joyce. So that kind of says a lot right there. But share a little bit more about how you got to this point. I grew up in New England, and there's a lot of climbing and outdoor stuff there. So I was really active outdoors, skiing and hiking and climbing and doing all that. Even when I was a kid, mostly through scouts is how I kind of got in everything. And a lot of the other things fell away, but I've always stayed with the climbing. So ever since I was a teenager, I've been doing it. And it's a big passion. And when we met... It was something that she liked to do as well. So it's become a thing for us to do together, kind of no matter where where we are. You know, we lived in L.A. and now we're in Vegas. And filmmaking came out of, I have a writing degree from college. And uh, I've just always liked doing creative things. And actually, it's been really great to share some of those things like climbing that most people don't get to experience unless they're able to see it. And I think that, Films about adventure are really great because they can inspire people and they can also teach people. So that's been a great way to overlap both Joyce and I together and both my kind of athletic life and creative life all in one. Fantastic. Did you both happen to see this article uh, about this little five-year-old boy that was with his parents and they hiked the Appalachian Trail? No. I'll, we'll put it in the show notes at, at the end. And it was up on like Facebook or maybe NPR did a story. This little five-year-old kid and his parents took him on the Appalachian Trail. I mean, you know, he had to get used to it. You know, I'm trying to get, a, I guess, a four-year-old or five-year-old to do anything is a huge undertaking. But to hike the entire Appalachian Trail, I thought, that, wow, that is amazing. I don't think I have that in me. But <laughs> when you met Joyce, I'm kind of curious, did you guys meet like at a meetup group or did you meet at an REI because you both like climbing? How did you, how'd you two meet? <laughs> we actually met online on OkCupid. So you're telling me, Joyce, it does work. <laughs> it does work. It can work. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah. And I, we just had enough common background and interest that we thought we'd have an interesting conversation and just kind of hit it off. So was your first date together, uh, let's go climbing, or did you go to the, like, for what I would do, let's go to the coffee shop? I, I think we just met for dinner, because as Joyce said, we we thought, like, well, let's go meet, at least we'll have a good, a good talk, because we have some common background. Okay. And so it was kind of a traditional, you know, dinner date at that point, and then all the kind of adventure stuff came later. Mm-hmm. When did you first begin to enter the climbing into the kind of like the dating ritual? I mean, I would do hiking. I would take a date out. Let's go look at the Milky Way and take pictures of the stars. So I get it. I get it. When did you first introduce the climbing? 
I think we introduced both of our major common interests pretty early. I think it was just the second or third date that we actually screened our respective films for each other. Cause at that point we had both independently made some films and then he took me bouldering in Malibu Creek Canyon in, in the uh, Los Angeles area. So there's kind of this river and waterfall and this really beautiful area. I fell in the water. So that was super fun. <laughs> oh boy. Hopefully not from a great height choice. No, no, not a huge height, but it was very cold. Oh God. Okay. Very cool. But that was actually a really happy accident because I got really nervous that she was going to be really upset. And instead she like, laughed about it and we and i was like okay if she's cool about that then she's probably cool about everything and then you know here we are so excellent excellent so how long have you been kind of dating before this idea of this is it i mean i want to spend my life with you know each of you thinking i want to spend my life with this guy or this or this uh, wonderful woman how long had that gone on before like okay let's do this maybe three three and a half years okay -ish. or i yeah. feel like that's how long we dated before we got married but when we decided probably in summer of 2014 so i guess we had been i guess we've been dating at the time for two years and then it took another year for us to actually have the wedding okay so 12 13 14 that's yeah. like three years yeah yeah okay all right. Now, first of all, Shane, are you the one that popped the question? Or I know Joyce, and I work with her, so she's she's incredibly capable of popping the question. But did you pop the question? Well, yes, in in our own way, it was uh, typically atypical. Okay, we actually went up to Yosemite. We took a climbing kind of adventure trip to Yosemite. And it was a little bit of a uh, to do, like the, it, it rained on us and we had to like retreat and go and get a hotel at the last minute and all this stuff. And it was hiking out in the dark and we were exhausted. And so I was very upset with myself about having it not go well. And I felt like, well, I can't ask her now. We just had this terrible ordeal, but I also didn't not want to ask. And so I kind of just fumbled through explaining how important she was to me and how I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. And then I waited for her to say yes. And she's like, well, you didn't actually ask me the question. <laughs> so we both kind of laughed. And then I, you know, while we're in the car trying to get to a hotel room to dry out and warm up, I asked like, will you marry me? And she's like, of course. So it was a very atypical thing, but it was kind of perfect for us and who we are. That's fantastic. You know, this kind of reminds me of... Uh... The American version of The Office, I forget the characters' names, the, the two leads and the, I guess, Jim and Pam. Pam. I think he asked her right outside of a convenience store or something like that. So that's that's kind of close. That's kind of close. <laughs> so let's get in, start to get into and share with our audience this very unique wedding. And where was your wedding? We got married not only in Yosemite, which is a very important place to me, but we got married on a ledge, 300 feet off the ground on El Capitan. 300 feet uh, off the, on a ledge on El Capitan in Yosemite Park. That's pretty amazing. Whose idea was this? Well, it was a slow reveal from me where I, again, was testing the waters and said, hey, soon to be wife, uh, what would you think about getting married in Yosemite? And she was like, oh, that sounds cool. And I was like, what would you think about getting married, like, you know, uh, El Cap? And she's like, oh, that seems cool. I was like, what would you think about getting married, like, on El Cap, like, on a ledge, like, not at the base? And with each step, I was super hesitant and expecting the no. And to my delight, every question got a yes. Very good. I mean, I thought it was, yeah, the uh, cool idea. Because uh, honestly, we didn't want to do a traditional big wedding, you know, it just sounded like a big headache to us. And so we were just going to go to the courthouse. And so when he brought up the idea, it was so unique and cool and personal to us. And so, you know, I just kind of thought, well, that'll be a great story. Yeah. <laughs> so I was all in. 
So in each step of the way, I mean, Shane, your questions are very coach-like. You know, you kind of, <laughs> you know, test the waters a little bit. What about this? What about this? Okay. What about this? So it's very, very coach-esque. I, I can see you're our life coach. Okay. You know, well done. Thank you. Joyce, Thank you. each step along the way, had you, I mean, you were like all in as he's asking you these questions or did, were you thinking, and was there anything, behind, you know, you know, in your mind thinking, Oh my God, what are we, what am I committing to here? Or you were like all in? I mean, you know, a little bit just thinking about logistics of it, because when he brought it up, I was still thinking kind of, you know, you invite people and, you know, do the whole thing. And I thought, oh, that sounds like it might be expensive to reserve space in Yosemite. And then you have to get all these people to come out and travel there and that sort of thing. So that was a little bit in the the back of my mind, but once it became that we were going to climb on a ledge that really limits your guest list a little bit. So, you, you know, Shane pops the question. You're like, yep, I'm let's, that's cool. Let's do this. And then the reality sets in like, okay, how do we accomplish this? And first I, I can imagine the families or uh, friends are ec ecstatic, you know, the perfect couple, you know, they love doing things together, love being with each other. You know, they're going to, and then when they found out you're going to get married in Yosemite and there's not going to have this traditional wedding, what was, what were the, you know, the, I don't know how I want to say repercussions, but I'm sure some things were said. Well, I'll, I'll jump in on that because my mom definitely had a, a huge, like uh zero to a hundred to, to zero where I got on the call with her on the, at, um, we were living in LA and my mom was in uh, uh, New England. And I was like, you know, hi, blah, 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 weekly check-in. Oh, I've got some exciting news. And she was like, oh? And I was like, I asked her to marry me. She said yes. And she was like, oh my God, amazing. And I was like, and we're going to get married in Yosemite. And she's like, but how is everyone going to go? It's like really isolated and small. And like, you know, so there was immediately some, some reactions. Yes. Okay. Okay. So once the, the smoke clears, so to speak, okay. In a good way. And you start to plan this event to go and get and have the ceremony in Yosemite. What, what type of activities were involved in, in really kind of executing this event? Well, first of all, to get in to climb where we wanted to climb. So, you know, Shane knows Yosemite pretty well and El Cap pretty well in the climbs. And so we had to think about a spot that was doable enough for our party. It, it was kind of a mixed level of climbing experience and activity, but also that wasn't that popular because we didn't want to be in the middle of our wedding and then another group climbing just kind of crashes the party and is trying to get through. And so the, the spot that he picked, it's quite an arduous hike in. And so that was one of the main components is that we all had to be in shape enough to do this steady uphill, rocky hike for about an hour and a half. Okay. I mean, just relentless uphill, right? So first of all, everyone needed to be able to do that. By the and way, so, I know Joyce, if you we had known each other, you would have invited me to the wedding. I would have <laughs> probably not been able to make it. I would have been at the parking lot. <laughs> at least right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so please continue. Yeah, so the hiking was a big piece and then of you know, climbing a big wall, which is the kind of climb that you do in your assembly where it's several pitches and often you have to stay overnight. Um is very technical. There's a lot more gear involved um, that you have to understand. You know how you have to know how to work, and you have to really have it down to be safe um, because it is risky. And so we did six months of training where we met with our team once a month to do kind of the skills training, and then everyone was kind of doing their own individual conditioning to be in shape for the hike. Shane, in the, in the number of folks that were joining you on this this hike and for the wedding, what was the count? Is it just kind of a handful, 10, 20? What was the count? We joked initially that we were eloping with friends because, uh, uh, to your point, yeah, we knew a lot of people wouldn't be able to go even just to Yosemite uh, in general. Right. 
but especially going up onto the little ledge because it was so small. And as Joyce mentioned, it's very arduous to get up there. So there were uh, certain practical considerations of, well, who might want to go, but are they physically capable of getting up there or not? And so the total number on the ledge was actually six people. So Joyce and I, her maid of honor, my best man, the pastor, who is Joyce's father, and the camera guy, so that he could video everything. And that was all who, so the six of us hiked in and climbed up and did the ceremony and then came back down and hiked back up. And we did have both our moms and Joyce's brother there, but they stayed kind of on the ground uh, in the valley. And so they were there like at the dinner and the day before and the day after, but up on the ledge for the ceremony was just the six of us. Okay. Now I can venture a guess, but of the six of you, who kind of stretched themselves the most of like, I can't believe I just did this. (laughs) Uh, Probably my dad, (laughs) you know, at the time he was 62 years old and had never climbed a day in his life and, you know, wasn't very active. And so he's, he's always been adventurous and uh, liking to learn new things. Um, But honestly, we were very skeptical that he could, do it. I mean, he kept insisting he wanted to when he could, but when we were doing trainings, he had all these trips overseas and kept missing our meetings. So he didn't learn any of the gear and we're like, we, we can't take him up. That's his safety. That's everyone else's safety on the line. But he did, you know, manage to kind of meet with us privately and learn the skills. And he actually picked it up very quickly. He was going to study and he was going to become an engineer so he has that kind of mind he understands systems and okay. machines and things really well so yeah it was probably the biggest stretch for him but also my maid of honor is afraid of heights oh. uh, but she did have some climbing experience so at least that she had on on him okay and with the <laughs> photographer uh, was this a friend of yours shane or yes yeah, so we've actually been friends since high school he's one of the few guys i've known the majority of my life and luckily for me, I think at least 10 years ago, maybe longer, uh, he opened his own photography studio. And so not only did he have all the equipment you would need, but he and I grew up climbing together. So I said, oh, this is perfect. It's someone I know who has a camera background and a climbing background. If there is anyone ideal for this, it's it's him. Wow. Now, when you when you have everybody together now, you get to Yosemite. How long was the hike up during that day? Because, I mean, a lot of things are going on. I mean, you're, there's excitement, nervousness, the weather, et cetera. And by the way, what time of the year was the hike? It was in late September. This is your anniversary, by the way. You yes. should know this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was in late September. Uh, and we picked that specifically so that it wouldn't be too hot. And okay. actually, it was so cold in the morning that we delayed our start. Like two hours. Yeah, we pushed it back about two hours. And I think it did take, you know, one and a half hours, an hour 45, something like that. Because we did stop, take breaks in between, you know, grab water, you know, eat, whatever. And we were filming everything, too. So sometimes you'd take a break and say, uh, you know, uh, Jeff's going to film us walking away from him. And then we'll sit down for five minutes so he can catch up and then get ahead of us and then film us walking up to him. And so that gave us a chance to take some breaks as well. Okay. So you, you get up to the ledge. How much time did you just spend up there? Probably a good hour. Yeah. Maybe even a little bit more. Because so, you know, there was a little bit of prep involved, obviously, getting set up for, the you know, the shots and all that. and um you know, my maid of honor and I touching up like hair and makeup and whatnot in our <laughs> outfits and whatever. And we ran through some parts of it. I mean, we ran through the whole ceremony once just as kind of the true ceremony. Yeah, and then, for us. Right, for us. And and we were, of course, recording it. But then we did do some pickups, you know, for coverage and different angles and things like that. And the magic of it was a lot of this happened as a happy accident. We knew going in that because we were quote unquote eloping with friends, 
that we wanted to film everything so that we could make, which is common, like a video of the wedding and share it with all the people who couldn't be there in person. We didn't really have the idea to do some of the other things that came out until like we got home and started looking at all the footage that we had. And so, yeah, let's, let's chat some more about that is, so you I mean, I, by the way, years ago, and I don't think I've ever shared this, even during our breakout, you know, team meetings, Joyce, is I paid my way through school as a wedding photographer. Okay. And in the days of film, now it's digital. I remember once I left the wedding to go home and I realized I forgot to take some very important shots. Not the best day of my life. I got them done. All was good. But I can only imagine you're you're heading down the cliff, you know, down the side. It's like, oh, my God, I forgot that. We got to go back up. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm thinking about that as you're sharing the story. Okay. Uh, now, by the way, I'm going to have nightmares probably for another 12 months now. <laughs> and I still, I still have nightmares that I've run out of film. And I haven't shot a wedding in a long, long time. So you get down, you start looking at, you have your party, you're, everybody's happy and join you get back home and you're looking at the the pictures the video when did you begin to have this insight like there's something here in addition to just sharing the output with your family and friends how'd that come about yeah i think from watching the footage back again you know when you're in it and experiencing it you know you just sort of go along with it it's kind of linear but then when you're watching it back several times you start to see patterns emerge like storylines emerge a little bit and we realized that each person in our team kind of had their own arc you know they had their own journey through this experience and their own perspective on it and all of that and even just as we began to share with people what we had done and getting some of the reactions and the things that they were like, wait, what? And, you know, asking questions about and wanting to know more about, we realized like, oh, it might be interesting to put some of that into a film. And so we originally cut uh, about a 40 minute uh, video together to screen at our reception, which happened six weeks after our uh, alleged ceremony. So we rented out a single screen theater in LA and invited, you know, all the people that we would have invited had it been a more traditional wedding and we screened that for them. And so the, this, you start to produce this documentary and, and it, it actually before we kind of go down that line of, uh, of uh, conversation, as a result of, this very unique wedding and the recording and, and sharing it. Did any, did you get any converts like, Oh God, I want to take up uh rock climbing. Well, it's funny. So my best man and I, we had worked a ropes course when we were young and he didn't get back into climbing, but it was the first time he climbed in probably 20 years since he, we were in like high school. And he said it definitely got him back into doing more outdoor stuff, just like hiking in general and, and having like adventure trips as opposed to just going to the gym. And I think that was really cool for him. And I know Joyce's father hasn't done any more climbing, but I think he too had more of an appreciation for like hiking and some of that outdoor stuff. But I haven't heard anybody that's seen the film that became a rock climber because of the movie yet, but maybe they're out there. It could be. now. With this documentary, yeah, how long did it take to take the video, bring in the different story arcs that, that, that Joyce that, that you had mentioned, and come out with this this final product? How, how much effort was involved there? And you, again, you're the filmmaker, so this is like a walk in the park for you, but it's a little different. Well, there was two, like Joyce mentioned, so we did the reception screening, and so we had about six weeks to to cut the the short film, the, the 40 minute one. And we initially felt like, okay, so we did the screening and that's done. You know, we had what, 250 people or whatever. We, we filled the theater. All our friends and family was there. Everyone saw it. It was great. And I think we tweaked it a little bit later, did some extra changes. And then we put it out in some film festivals. 
And I think at first we were like, okay, that's our movie and it's done. And then a couple years later, I think it was, so that was 2015. 2016. Married in 2015. So 2016 is when it went out into the festivals initially, the short version. And then in 2019, we were like, you know, there's some stuff we weren't able to fit in. I I wonder if maybe we could turn this into a feature film. And so then we had this second round of turning it from 40 minutes into what is now a 85 minute full length movie. Oh wow. And so so to answer your question, initially it was the six weeks, but then really it became this multi-year, multi-version project. That's very cool. So I am curious, when you did the screening for the family and friends, were you filming you know how you you go, oh I've never actually been to a a a, a festival or a screening, but I can imagine you know, there's the paparazzi out there taking pictures of the guests coming in on the red carpet. There's the videos. There's the talking at the, you know, the logo wall. Everybody's in their finest. Uh, were you taking any of those kinds of shots, too? I mean, really making this like the Holly, the hot quote unquote Hollywood screening? Yeah, so there was a red carpet and we had our posters up, you know, in the theater on display. And, you know, El Cap Wedding was in the marquee and everything. Um, So, and we did kind of this silly thing, you know, a popular thing at weddings uh, fairly recently was, you know, the photo booth with all the props, like the giant glasses and boas and stuff. So we had all kind of these movie themed props that we had people that could use like a tiny Oscar or whatever. And, and they were on the red carpet taking, you know, fun photos and such. And, And our buddy Jeff, who had filmed, uh, the the movie was Sarah's our photographer and he was he was taking shots and so yeah we definitely had the the whole red carpet experience and it's a really nice theater very nice seats uh, and then afterwards they have this patio in the back and so that's where we had all the food uh, and dessert and all of that very nice very nice so when the 40 minute film gets turned into the you know the 80 plus 85 minute film and you start to submit to the festivals. What was the result of that second initiative? Well, to go back, the the first one, the the short version we call it, the forty minute, uh, we won a best documentary award at the Mountain Film Festival, and that was very cool because they they did the typical thing, which is like email you a PDF of like, hey, here's your you know certificate of winning the thing. But we also had the option of getting this really nice kind of like desktop, like crystal award. Like glass cut. Yeah. yeah. And it's, uh, in, you know, emblazoned, you know, it has the, our name and the name of the movie and everything on it. So that was really cool. And then when the, the feature came out, uh, it was supposed to be in the, it was three festivals here in Las Vegas in 2020. And of course the festivals were all canceled because of COVID. So we had to kind of sit on our hands for a year and wait. But this past July, we were able to actually have the film premiere on the big screen with the red carpet and everything uh, here live in Las Vegas. And some of our friends came. And in fact, Joyce's father drove in from California. And so we were able to have a little mini reunion and see the poster on the wall and walk the red carpet and all of that Um in a, in a proper big theater as part of a, a festival. So there were some delays and some unexpected things, but it was really exciting. It felt like the completion of a big arc. That's fantastic. And, you know, definitely, and as I had, would share with many of my guests, that, you know, whatever photographs you could, would like to share, you know, up on El Cap or during the, the premiere, the festivals, just would love to be able to to share that with our audience of you know your the accomplishment the joy I think that would be a fantastic accompaniment to the podcast now if our listeners want to learn more about or actually to view this documentary and where would they go to see it so they can go to lcapwedding.com that's e l c a p wedding.com and they can either rent or buy to stream it online Fantastic. Now, I'm curious now that this event is major event the, the the documentary, the full film. It's, it's, you know, it's still in the rear view mirror. You can still see it. Okay. Um, the folks 
perhaps other than family and friends that have seen it, what type of reaction have you gotten to number one, I can't believe you guys did this. And number two, this is so cool. I want to do this. Or I know people that would love to do, do to repeat exactly what you did. What kind of feedback have you gotten there? Yeah, so we've definitely heard things like, you know, it's the most unique wedding we've ever heard of. And um, nope, you know, <laughs> for people who are afraid of ice. Um, and I've definitely heard from other climbers that, oh my gosh, we should do this or um, things like that. And I think definitely my dad uh, has gotten a great reaction from his pastor friends because pastors do a lot of weddings, but this one is definitely unique. And so he's probably the only pastor who's ever done a wedding on a ledge. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've I've seen pictures underwater. I've seen pictures up on, you know, jumping out of airplanes which is something I would never do. But, and, and then Al Cap, that's, that's pretty darn unique. That's pretty darn unique. What are your big takeaways for the two of you? And number one, learning more about yourself, your partner, your friends, and what you accomplished through this adventure of, of number one, you know, having the moment of having your wedding planning and executing this this climb, this very technical climb, what's your overall learnings that you would want to share with our audience? For me, I would say just the, the increased confidence, I think, or bravery of just try it. You know, I, I think we were contending with a lot in doing this. And there were a lot of points where we weren't sure if it could happen. But having a, a strong team and everyone being committed to it and just being like, well, let's go for it. Let's try it um, was incredible and gave us the ability to just keep pushing, keep problem solving when things came up and figure out a way and make it happen. And so being able to complete something like that on that scale, yeah, I think it's probably still one of the biggest projects overall I've ever done. So it just kind of gave me a little bit more the confidence and courage to try other things. Very good. Shane? Well, it's funny because I, when I was younger, I didn't ever necessarily, I, I, I didn't grow up thinking like, I'm going to get married and have kids someday and, and all of that kind of, you know, quote, normal stuff. I, my l future vision of life was more, I want to go climb this mountain somewhere or I want to go travel to this country. Like th those were the things that I thought of. And if I thought of getting married, it was more of this non-traditional way. And I didn't think that would ever, I'd ever meet someone who would kind of embrace that. And so to have not only a wedding, but a film and a climbing trip all in one <laughs> really cemented me with Joyce because it showed me that in each one of those aspects, separately much less together that we were really in alignment and that i think showed me that well if that can happen like what else is possible very good i love that and uh you know kudos to uh okay cupid because like wow <laughs> <laughs> i i love it and it's just i definitely you know for our listeners you've got to check out the you know El Cap wedding and we'll we'll provide the, the back links uh, to it on our website. Uh, Shane and Joyce, if our listeners would like to continue to learn more about you and your adventures, your work, Joyce, why don't we start with you? Where, where are the best places for them to go? So they can find me uh, at JoyceU.com, J-O-Y-C-E-Y-O-O. -O. And also I'm on LinkedIn, Joyce H-U. And uh, Instagram, it's Noice Juice. N O Y C E J U I C E. Uh, those are two of my nicknames. <laughs> I think I just learned something new about you. Okay. <laughs> Stays here. I don't share it anywhere else. <laughs> Shane, how about you? Where's the best places to get to know more about you? I'm I'm on my my website and all the socials at Shane Borzet. So they put that name in a Google search, like all my stuff will pop up. The the one thing I did want to tag on though is we also had our first original soundtrack for the film. And you can get 
you just look up Uncap Wedding wherever you get your music, whether you want to stream it, download it, buy it, and um, you can find the soundtrack. And it's uh, all singer songwriter music made by a friend of ours, which is another great part of the collaboration. That is fantastic. It's like a little bit for everybody. It's fantastic. Well, Shane Joyce, thank you so much for uh, joining me on the Outdoor Adventure Series on Success Insight Podcast. I think this is a a very worthy addition. It's just like, you know, it's been on my mind for a while to ask Joyce to see, would you like to come on the podcast? And especially now that the Outdoor Adventure Series is really, you know, really taking off. And so I think it's just a wonderful addition to it. So thank you both for taking time and joining me here today. I appreciate it. Thank you. We had a great time. Yes. Great opportunity. Thanks. Fantastic. All right, folks, we have just been chatting with uh, Joyce Yu. She's a voice actor, career coach, her husband, Shane Borzoff, filmmaker, life coach. And uh, this episode has been on the Outdoor Adventure Series on Success Insight Podcast. And we have been really chatting with uh, Joyce and Shane about their journey to wedded bliss. And in this case, the wedded bliss actually it's ongoing, obviously, but the the event of the wedding took place, you know, 300 and some feet uh, above uh, ground level on El Capitan in Yosemite. And uh, along the way, lives were changed. And we had this uh, young lady afraid of heights, a dad, the pastor, who's never thought he would wake up one day and say, I'm going to go climb a rock to marry my daughter but he did and what a great experience and not only the the documentary but the full-length film and really uh and the kudos to to uh, shane and joyce this film has won awards the uh 2017 uh, best documentary at the uh, mountain film festival and we'll provide again all backlinks to that on our website and of course go out and to the web, uh, lcapwedding.com. Uh, that is the website where you can take a look at the wedding. And you can also find the music that was created by Shane's friend. Uh, we'll have all the links back to uh, Shane and Joyce's uh, social sites as well. Okay. Uh, if you enjoyed today's podcast, we would love to hear from you. We would love a comment, a like. Hey, share it with your friends, family. If you have friends that are into mountain climbing, this is perfect, okay? You can find us on our website, successinsightpodcast.com, LinkedIn and Facebook, Success Insight Podcast. And we're also on all of the podcasting platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Pandora, especially Spotify, where we have our, our Outdoor Adventure Series. So you can listen to this episode as well as all of our other Outdoor Adventure Series episodes. Okay, folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there, have a phenomenal day. Take care of yourselves, your family, practice social distancing if appropriate, wear the mask if appropriate, take care of everybody in the community, yourselves, and we will see you on the next episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series on the Success Insight Podcast. Take care now. Success Insight is a production of Fox Coaching and First Story Strategies. Find us online, successinsightpodcast.com.